bone tissue or osseous tissue comes in two types. Uh, there is spongy bone, which is a lighter bone tissue because of a lot of spaces in between the actual bone. And this spongy bone is often found on the interior of bones. A lot of spongy bone on the interior of long bones. As you can see, this is the proximal end of the humerus or upper arm bone. So that spongy bone is on the inside. Inside these little spaces is where you would find a lot of the bone marrow. Uh, bone marrow being the tissue that's actively producing new red blood cells, uh, new white blood cells, and new platelets. Compact bone, as the name suggests, is more dense. Uh, it is stronger bone tissue, but both of these give a, a bone strength. Uh, but compact bone doesn't have the spaces in it for bone marrow. Uh, and it's found more along the superficial surface of a bone. So you can see the compact bone lying out here on the, on the superficial surface of the bone, whereas on the inside you have the spongy bone. This is an artistic drawing of bone tissue. Uh, you have to first kind of understand what you're looking at here. So if you look over here in the upper left corner, we see that we've taken a little piece of the outer portion of this bone. So we're not really getting all the way in deep to the medullary cavity, but we're looking at this outer portion of the bone, which is mostly, as you can see here, mostly compact bone, but then you start to hit a little bit of the spongy bone on the inside. So looking at this diagram, we can note a few structures. We can note on the outer surface of the bone there is a layer called the periosteum. Peri means surrounding, osteum meaning bone. So this is a layer of a lot of connective tissue surrounding the outside of the bone. We can see that down here we, we identify all this as being compact bone, whereas towards the center, as we're going towards the medullary cavity, we see the spongy bone. Compact bone is made up of units called osteons. These osteons are cylindrical structures with layers of matrix. So you can see there's this layering to this osteon, and the layers surround a central canal. In that central canal, you see blood vessels. So there's a lot of blood supply to a bone. A bone is a living organ. Uh, it needs oxygen. It needs nutrients. So you have to be able to distribute blood throughout the, the bone. These layers are known as concentric lamellae. A lamella is a layer. So these are just circular layers that form that osteon. So you can notice that there's quite a few of these cylindrical units found in the compact bone. And those cylindrical units give compact bone its strength. The spongy bone, the units that form spongy bone are different. There's not there's none of these cylindrical osteons, but instead they have what's called trabeculae. A trabecula is a branch or rod-like structure of the spongy bone. So you want to associate osteons with compact bone, trabeculae with spongy bone. You'll also notice there's a lot of these little osteocytes found throughout the bone, maintaining that bone matrix. Uh, the osteocytes are often found in little compartments known as a lacuna, and they help just maintain that bone matrix. Bone formation is going to be our next topic. So how do bones form? When do bones form? Uh, we often refer to bone formation as ossification or osteogenesis, so the formation of bone tissue. Um, when do we form bone tissue? Uh, there are four primary situations. One, obviously, when we make a bone during embryonic and fetal development, you have to make bone tissue. Uh, that bone tissue is made... Uh, either to form the bone, but then also to enlarge and grow that bone. That one's kind of obvious. Number two, we obviously need to grow those bones even after birth. 
So after embryonic and fetal development, a baby has to grow uh, all the way up until adulthood. Uh, we're actively producing a lot of new bone uh, matrix. Number three, throughout your entire life. So your body never stops making bone tissue. Um, bones are always being remodeled throughout our entire life. Now they're not getting any bigger, but we are breaking down bone matrix uh, with our osteoclasts, uh, and then we are reforming that bone matrix with our osteoblasts. So collectively, we call that bone remodeling. And that happens, again, throughout your entire life. And then the fourth situation is if we have a fracture. In order to repair a fracture, we often have to deposit new bone matrix in order to heal that bone um, or, you know, uh, in essence, glue those fractured pieces of bone together with bone tissue. There's two ways to ossify. Uh, these two ways, if you want to go back to number one, formation of a bone, uh, in order to make a bone, you do it one of two ways. One way is called intramembranous ossification. The key here is knowing what intra means and membranous. Membranous refers to membranes. Um, there are connective tissue membranes that are formed. And then intra means inside. The bone is produced and deposited in between these two membranes, or said another way, inside the membranes. This is how your body forms your, many of your flat bones. So if you think of your skull and some of these cranial bones, they're flat. And these flat bones are first formed by membranes, and then we fill the membranes with bone tissue. Uh, if you've ever seen a baby... Uh, we know that there are flat spots, or soft spots, I should say, uh, in the bone, in the skull. Those flat, sp uh, soft spots, I'm sorry, are the connective tissue membranes that haven't ossified yet. The next way to make a bone is, if it's not flat, we use a different method. We use what's called endochondrial. Chondrial refers to cartilage. Endo means inside cartilage. So the difference is we form cartilage first and then that cartilage gets in essence replaced with bone tissue. So these are the two forms of ossification. This is a figure in your book that shows intramembranous. So notice they are highlighting some of these flat bones of the skull. Uh, the mandible also forms this way. Um, but I want to refer you to number four here. This is kind of the home run where you see that there would have been these membranes here and here on this side. And then in between the membranes, we deposited and formed compact bone as well as spongy bone. So the key here is the connective tissue membranes that are formed first. This is a figure depicting endochondrial ossification. So again, the key is chondrial, referring to cartilage, and it's a hyaline cartilage. So we often call these cartilage models. So if we were to look during embryonic development, we form these cartilage models. They look like a bone, but they're not actually bone matrix yet. It's a hyaline cartilage uh, model of a bone. And then as embryonic development and fetal development continues, much of that cartilage gets replaced with bone tissue. So we see what's called a primary ossification center, which starts to deposit bone matrix. We get a secondary ossification center that occurs at the uh, epiphyses, the ends, and starts to deposit bone tissue there. What happens is what's left in between the primary ossification and the secondary ossification is a layer of cartilage that remains. And that layer of cartilage that remains is called the epiphyseal plate, or commonly referred to as the growth plate. What this allows is this bone to grow in length. We're going to talk about this in the next video. But if we completely converted that cartilage to bone, 
this bone would not have the ability to grow in length. So we leave that layer of hyaline cartilage at that epiphyseal plate. So we'll talk a little more about how bones grow in width and, and length uh, in the next video.